Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're doing another installment in the Luxury Will I Buy It series, but here on my channel, we like to add a little French twist. So for collections we do want, we say oui, and for collections we don't want, we say non merci. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. As you may know, I have my online beauty consulting service. This is a one-on-one -on -one video chat with me where you get to ask me all of your burning beauty questions. You get my undivided attention and you get to ask me all of the makeup questions you've ever had. So to book an appointment for yourself or to buy a gift card for someone special, click the link down below. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in because I saw this a few days ago. I am so excited. Okay, so Dior, the makeup brand, they are coming out with a new uh, Addict Lip Maximizer. This is on Sephora and this will be available December 15th, which will come much sooner than you expect, I swear. Blink and it'll be the 15th. And so the maximizers exist. I have many, not here on my vanity, but I, I own multiples. Um, and honestly, I'm not certain what the difference is with this new one here. It's like a new reformulation but it's the maximizer with a little bit of a tingling effect it says that the iconic dior addict lip maximizer plumping lip gloss is getting a refresh and it's now with 90 percent natural origin formula so it's reimagined and updated so the case is going to be slightly different and the shades oh my goodness so i think the difference here is that the ingredients are better they're sourcing better ingredients for the product and the shade range typically the maximizer has like five colors maybe a couple special limited edition one shot ones for holidays whatever but this here has like 20 shades yes 20 shades there are 20 colors to choose from so we have like the classic 001 that's like your lip but better like it just reacts to your lip ph it's very nice that's the one that i've repurchased the most but there's like rosewood colors there's berries there's raspberries there's corals and they also have like um flat glossy ones and they have some sparkly finish too i think there's only two finishes available right now and if you zoom in on the arm swatches you can see a subtle difference like some of them do look a bit more sparkly and some look more like just a glossy color i am so excited i've already uh, submitted my email to let me know as soon as these are available but i'll, I'll go ahead and check uh, the 15th in the morning when they're available because i i love the formula i think the colors look great i'm so happy that there are so many colors to choose from i love i love this gloss i love it so much so i'm very happy to see this honestly the hardest part is going to be choosing which colors I want. I think I'm more partial to the like the milky pure gloss, not so much the, the sparkly ones. I don't know, I'm hoping they're not grainy or gritty, but just sometimes the more sparkly lip glosses tend to be a bit more grainy and gritty, so I don't really want that, but we will see. This is obviously, for me, a wee. Huge, huge wee. Cannot wait. So excited. These look so beautiful, and some of the shades look quite dark. They look very opaque, and even though it's sort of like a lip treatment that you can apply before you do the rest of your makeup, some of these look so dark and so rich that you could just use this with like a lip liner and a lipstick and treat it as your lip color. So super excited huge wee for me cannot wait for these so if you are not subscribed yet make sure that you are with your notifications on because i will be reviewing these very very shortly moving on to some sisley we have some new makeup here now this snuck in i think a few weeks ago this is the uh, stilo correct so this is a stilo corrector this is very long wearing high coverage concealer in a pen format for flawless looking complexion. This is interesting. This is supposed to be very long wearing and very high coverage, not medium, not light, just like high, high coverage. This sort of snuck in on me. I, I didn't really see it on that many blogs, but I think it came out a couple weeks ago. It's interesting that one side is the corrector here. It looks like it's 
a creamy stick like you know those uh, stick foundations that's sort of what this looks like here but then on the bottom you get that little sponge tip to blend and to you know uh, fix your makeup so that's an interesting concept I'm wondering how much product you get in here because it does look very small it looks quite tiny but if it is very high coverage maybe a little bit goes a long way it just looks like a tiny little pencil here. Let's see what else it says. A range of 11 shades, that's not that great, they could add more, with neutral undertones to suit a range of skin tones. So they're, they only have neutral undertones? Interesting. So there's no, weird, only neutral undertones. Hmm. I think this is more for like a complexion corrector than under eye corrector. Maybe if you have dark spots, or acne scarring that you want to hide, this would be more for you. A correcting concealer pen that offers flawless complexion with its high coverage formula and a creamy texture that blends seamlessly. Immediately, the Stilo Correct Matte Finish conceals blemishes, smooths and reduces the look of imperfections, and visually minimizes pigmentation flaws. Day after day, it's formula enriched with benzoic acid and alpha bismol helps to minimize the appearance and intensity of blemishes. So it has skincare in there that's supposed to, you know, correct and also diminish the actual uh, blemish itself. So the benzoic acid is meant to help minimize the look of blemishes. The alpha bismol soothes skin and minimizes the feelings of discomfort. And there's also vitamin E for kind of the antioxidant um, and also nourishing aspect. Um, I don't think that this is a product for me personally. I like to correct my under eyes, but I don't typically correct on my complexion unless I have a breakout, which, you know, happens once a month. Isn't that a joy? But I don't think that this is a product for me. I don't know. Maybe if I see it in person, maybe if it's really creamy, it could be a nice, um, very light, no makeup makeup look, you know, where you just spot correct a little bit and just get out the door. Sometimes I say no merci to a product when I just don't think that it's a good product, but I think this is just not for me. So it's a no merci for me because I just, this just doesn't appeal to me. You know, I just bought a great concealer from Chanel, the Sublimage one, and that's just like filling all of my concealer needs for the moment. So I don't really need a corrector right now, but I know some people deal with hyperpigmentation, and lots of blemishes and so they need to spot correct so maybe this is for you Sicily is a good brand so maybe it's for you but it's not for me okay so moving on to a product where I feel like I'm the only person that I know who doesn't like this product here this is the Baccarat Rouge 540 this is the scented sparkling body oil from Maison Francis uh, Kurjan this perfume, I mean, it is on everyone's radar. Every perfumer that I know, every luxury YouTuber be that I know loves this perfume. They think it's like the nicest, most luxurious, most expensive sell smelling perfume ever. I think that this is hands down the most offensive perfume I've ever smelled. <gasps> on me, this smells like a seasoned steak. It smells like a sopping wet wool sock with pennies inside the wool sock. Uh, yeah, like, I don't, it's not for me. It's a huge non merci for me. I don't know what it is, but it's, no, 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 no merci. But it is for everyone else. Everyone else loves this perfume. Everyone loves it except for me. And you know what? That's fine. More for you. You can have mine. I will not sell out your beloved Baccarat Rouge. So they have a scented body oil. And I picked up uh, the Coco Mademoiselle and the number five. And I love my Mademoiselle scented. Um, it's like a pearly body gel. I wore it this weekend. It smells gorgeous. So I love it because I love Mademoiselle and also number five, you know, for special occasions. And so this Baccarat Rouge is just the same concept, but this is a sparkling body oil. So it's going to have like a, I think it's going to be like a dry oil. 
So this could be gorgeous after a shower because not all showers are created equal. You know the shower where you actually wash your hair first of all and you exfoliate and you do all that jazz. This is the type of product you go into as the final step afterwards. So if you like this perfume, if you know someone who likes this perfume, you now have a scented body oil, which I'm sure you would love if you love this perfume. It's not for me, but it could be for you. Okay, moving on to something new-ish from Chanel. So this is the Sublimage Le Teint Foundation. So the Sublimage Le Teint Foundation has existed for several years. This is not new. And this is part Sublimage skincare. So Sublimage is like the top of the top for Chanel for global anti-aging, for radiance, for fine lines, for wrinkles, for spots, everything. It kind of does everything. And this foundation here is part skincare, part foundation. It's uh, the sister of the concealer here. So this is the mini version in the concealer. And then we have the foundation. Now what's new is that they've added shades. They've extended the shade range because originally the shade range for this one here was not spectacular. I think it went from like a B10 to a B60. Mm could be much better. And so they've added lighter shades. They've also added more golden hues as well. So they've just sort of extended the shade range and then just added more tones in each direction as well, which is nice. And they've added much deeper, darker skin tones, which is nice as well. So I think this is great. I would love to see more of this from the brand. One thing that I find really confusing from Chanel is that they will come out with like number one camellia foundation member uh, at the beginning of this year in january there was like the new number one line like the camellia rouge everything the foundation this one here this has a very extensive shade range it's pretty inclusive and they also added more shades to their uh, concealer, the corrector, the one in the stick. This concealer here, this corrector, they added more shades for this as well. And then this year for the holiday season, they have two highlighters. And I wear the lightest one, Or Dori, but this is the lightest one available. There's one that that is much darker. And so this uh, highlighter shade here and the one, the one that's darker, would be more suitable for deeper, darker skin tones and as well as those products that I mentioned. But the thing that's confusing with Chanel is that they're not consistent. Like sometimes they'll come out with a, sh a new foundation that's like inclusive. They'll come out with highlighters that are more suited for like medium to deeper skin tones. They'll come out with concealers that work for deeper skin tones. But it's not consistent. Like not every launch from the brand is like that. And so it's just confusing. While they extended this shade range here for the Sublimage, I wouldn't be shocked whatsoever if they come out with a new concealer or powder or whatever that it has like five shades that wouldn't be inclusive whatsoever. I don't understand what they're doing. It's like they take one step forward and two steps back. It's like they're trying to catch up and provide an inclusive shade range for all of their clients but they don't seem to want to do it for every product, which is confusing. I, I know I said it a couple of times, but it's confusing because you never know where you stand. You never know if you're going to be on the lighter side of the range or in the complete medium or at the darkest. Like it's, it's really confusing. And I just, I don't know, like I think it's great that they're doing this and they should maintain it. They should just be consistent all around because I wear like a B30, B40. I'm starting to go more towards 30 now because it's winter, but it must be really confusing for people who are on like the opposite ends of the spectrum. Like if you wear like a one or a 10 from Chanel, it must be really confusing when they come out with the highlighters that typically the lighter one would work for you, but it is impossible for you. And also if you're used to wearing like a 150 from Chanel in the foundation range, you must be really confusing when the highlighters all of a sudden work for you, but then the release before that didn't. I don't know. I'm confused. Let me know if you're confused, but I think it's great that they're extending the uh, the range. I like this foundation. It's a wee for me. I already, I've already tried it out. I, I like it. I don't currently own one right now, but I might get one in the near future because it is just like a really gorgeous, it's a really nice foundation. It's very light. It kind of just gives you this intense, luminous glow. It's very beautiful. Uh, it's a beautiful foundation. So it's a wee, but you know, 
Again, I said confusing a million times, so you know what I'm saying. Moving on to an Instagram blog, this is wayj0315. They have a couple of sneak peeks here. So this one here is from Clé de Peau. This is supposed to be the new Clé de Peau sunscreen collection. It's supposed to have an SPF of 50, and this is the UV protective cream and a UV protective lip balm. This is an SPF of 30, because if you go in the sun, if you're someone who goes, you know, somewhere warm in winter, it is nice to put a protective layer on your lips because you, can, you actually can burn your lips. Also, if you go skiing or snowboarding, you should apply a sunscreen on your face because you can get a sunburn when you're on the ski slopes. So it's good to have a protective layer on your lips. And so I personally really like Clé de Peau. I have a lot of their products. I'm, I like the brand a lot. Um, they sort of lured me in with their concealer and then they got me on the hook and now here I am. And so I think this is really nice. I don't think I've ever tried a pure SPF product from the brand. I have, I have some face primers that have an SPF in them, but this looks like it's a pure sunscreen with a SPF of 50 and then the lip balm with a 30. Now, this is supposed to come out in February, late February the 21st. Will this come to Canada? That's an excellent question because we have very strict uh, guidelines when it comes to F uh, SPF, but if you look at the label, there is a French translation, which means it could be coming to Canada. So if it does, I definitely would be interested in trying it out. It's a wee for me. I like the brand. I trust them. I trust that it's going to be a good SPF. So it's a wee for me, definitely. Let me know what you think. And let me know if you're uh, someone who likes to go sne uh, skiing or snowboarding, if you've ever gotten like sunburned, because it is something that can happen. And last but not least, we have something here, a little sneak peek. That's actually quite interesting. This is from Byrido, and this is the Purple Echo Eyeshadow Palette, five colors, limited edition. So I like purple eyeshadow. I love color. I love fun colors. I haven't tried anything yet from Byrido. I just, I don't know, it hasn't happened yet. I, I keep seeing them. They definitely have been mentioned multiple times on these uh, Will I Bite videos, but I haven't been swayed yet, but this looks interesting. I think that the compact looks really cool. I think the case looks like some sort of like melted alien purple egg. I don't know how else to describe it. It looks textured, but it looks like it reflects all the shades available in the palette with like light and dark and a little bit of white. It looks really interesting. I kind of wish it was permanent. I don't like that it's limited edition. You have to like rush to get it. We have some swatches here. These are promo photos. We always take a huge pinch of salt with, or grain of salt, whatever the expression is, with these promo photos, because they might look very different, but I think it looks objectively very nice. Some of the shadows look like they might have a whisper of like bluish to them, but we'll sort of have to wait and see. I personally, I just got the Lisa Eldridge purple palette. Is that Myth? Yes. I really like it. I think it's really nice. I don't know if I need another purple palette like right now, but I think that this looks nice. Maybe if I can see it in person, I think it might be at Holt Renfrew. I think it's online at Holt Renfrew. I don't know if it's there in person, but hmm, we'll see. I don't know. I think this is a bit that it's a maybe. Maybe I would get this. Maybe if I can see it in person. I'm wondering those like shimmer colors, if they're going to be grainy or like topper colors or if they're going to be like buttery, smooth satin ones, you know what I mean? So it's a maybe, it's a pretty strong maybe. And I think that's it for today's roundup of these new coming out on the horizon. Some are coming out very shortly. I like these types of videos because it's nice to just see what's coming out, see what I want to spend my money on, what I'm going to budget on. It's always nice to just, you know, see what's coming out and bubbling on the horizon. So leave a comment down below, sound off in the comments, and let me know what you're going to be spending your hard-earned money on or what you're going to just skip completely. And I think that's all I have for you guys for today. So I thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.